today. It's Mr. Buzz here. This is your ultimate guide to how to finish the game of the forest and save your son Timmy. There's a hell of a lot of spoilers in this video, so be careful if you are watching it. This is the cave that we will be using. It's the northern cave. But before we enter, I just want to recommend that you build a save slot. And if you're feeling up to it, you can also put in things like birdhouses to get feathers for arrows. You can put in water collectors and meat racks so that you have prepared meat before you go in. And if you really want to go to the extremes, you can set up things to get uh, other supplies. Such as the armor, bone armor, or creepy armor. Uh, explosives on an explosive rack. Um, and you can also build a shelving system, store meds and alcohol, so that you're all stocked up when you're ready to go in. Speaking of things that you might need when you go into the cave, I'm going to go through my inventory, and not only with the items that you do need to finish the game, I'm going to go through some items that I recommend taking in. To begin with, um, we have the rebreather, um, and we have some air canisters for that, so one item that you do need. The climbing axe is a second item that you do need, and last but certainly not least, the key card to enter the last parts of the game. So once you have these items, you are then ready to forward on to the rest of the game. I recommend taking in a full stock of dried meat. Now here I don't have the fish, but you can take that in as well. Uh, it saves you cooking. If you really want to, you can take small meat, and that will help you along. You just have to build fires for that. Water, whether it's in a water skin or your pot, or both, is highly recommended. Uh, hydration is something that you need to keep an eye on. Soda can give you energy, same as the snacks. So if you fill up your supplies with these, then you should do okay. Berries, both the blueberries and blackberries, give you energy, fill your stomach, and rehydrate you, so they're good. Now, my favorite weapons are explosives against the final boss. Um, if you are taking in explosives, I recommend taking in enough of the items that you need to make those explosives. You can only carry four watches, but that's okay. Um, flicking here, I don't quite show what I'm meant to, but I've only got one sap, and I'm going to put all my sticky bombs on here. And using that one sap, that actually turned them all in, into sticky bombs. I just didn't think it worked. I stopped filming, and it did. It turned them all into sticky bombs with one sap. A stick bag is highly recommended if you want to build uh, temporary shelters or fires as you go. You need leaves and sticks. So as many of those as you can carry. You can also use the sticks to make arrows as long as you've got the feathers to go along with that. Which I alluded to earlier with the birdhouses. Uh, lighting in the caves can be a bit uh, of an issue, so there are the lighter or torch to be used. You can use the electrical tape to attach the torch to certain weapons like bows and other things, but um, they can't be used on the crossbow. But it is a single handed weapon, so you can actually carry the torch in one hand or the lighter and use the crossbow with the other hand. Flares are good as well for lighting up caves, um, and I recommend getting the flare gun at some stage because you can load the flares into it and they hold a lot of flares in them while well, you can only carry 10 normally. A spear bag full of spears is excellent also uh, against mutants. An upgraded spear and a weak spear do the same amount of damage when they're thrown, so if you really want to you can create a Incinerary spear, um, using alcohol of course, 
Same as Molotovs, so you might want to supply yourself with alcohol or booze. Next on the list, you may have made warm gear at this stage. I intended to, but actually didn't get around to it. It should be located here. Uh, I did, however, manage to get some creepy armor and make some bone armor, so I recommend stocking up on the bone armor. Carry it in as much as you can. The plain axe is kind of an icon of this game, so during this tutorial I will be using it. Uh, if you want to light up caves or warm yourself, you can attach a cloth to it. There's a flintlock pistol in the game, and if you manage to collect all eight parts, as I have here, you can take that in. I'm going to take it in because I want to use it against the final boss. Uh, I do have some ammo. The crossbow is another weapon that I wanted to really test against the boss. Um, it's a new item. I also recommend taking in health mixes and energy mixes the most you can and take in herbs so you can make some more and don't forget to carry in some meds because you might get hit by some cannibals. Last but not least there's skulls and rocks needed throughout the caves near the end but they are supplied within and you get bones of cannibals to make extra armor so that's it so if you're happy with what you have in your inventory to continue on to the end then this video is for you let's go again this is the cave that we're entering it's found in the northern part of the map across the land bridge we enter the cave and there are some bodies hanging from the ceiling and use whatever light source you like. You head down to this rope. There is an armsy and some cannibals down here. Once you get past them, you've got to bust your way through this wall. Once you've busted your way through, you come around. Once you've killed the cannibals, I had to change my torch. I don't like when you get blood on the torch. It turns it all red. Once you've killed the cannibals and the mutant, you come around. Don't go down the first rope. Come down this second rope. You come along and down this rope. You come down about three, maybe four ropes. Eventually you'll find yourself on a level where there's a wall that you have to use the climbing axe with. You want to climb down, so go across and down. There are a few more ropes to climb and once you've made it all the way down the bottom there's a cannibal, there's a busted down door and some mutant babies. And then continuing on, once you make it past those guys, more walls to crawl through. You enter through this room here, and we go down that rope. There's an air canister here, and we go down here. We climb down this rope, come up this passageway, and we find ourselves an orange tent. You can save and continue on. There are more cannibals up here. And there is another wooden wall that we have to knock down. And once we've knocked that down, there's more cannibals on the other side. And this bit can get a bit confusing. So I did try to light it up with the flares, but when they landed in the water they sort of were extinguished, so it didn't really work. There are cannibals and mutants in here, so be careful. 
The main thing you're looking for is this effigy here. Follow this passageway behind it until you see this wall and you bust it down and there's more cannibals on the other side. Make your way past those cannibals and you have to jump in this water. You don't have to dive into the water here, you just swim to the other side. Once you've made it to the other side, there's a wall you have to blow up. So if you have dynamite or explosives, excellent. If you don't, then you will need them. You can crawl up this wall or jump up the side here. And if the mutant gets trapped down there, they can't get back up. And there is two of them in this section. That's the door you're looking for. Use these stones to put on the pedestal. Three to four stones, and that will open the door. Go on through. And then there are cannibals. Once you've dealt with the cannibals, in whatever fashion you like, There's another pedestal, and you can use skulls or rocks on these pedestals. Your choice. So continue on through the door, and there's a bridge that you got to cross, and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And we'll crawl through this crevice. And this is the last pedestal that you come across before you open up the door to the bottom of the sinkhole. Now, there are other ways to get down inside the sinkhole. A new item added into the game recently in update 1.1 was the glider. And I decided to take the glider down into the sinkhole. So down we go. Whee! The only thing I'll mention here is to be careful not to get caught in the helicopter. You can also do it the old fashioned way, mixed with a bit of new fashion. And turtle sled your way into the sinkhole, but uh, do this at your own risk. Either way, you've made it to the bottom of the sinkhole. Whether you came through that door, you flew down, or managed to survive a turtle sled. This is what you're looking for in the center. Swim up to it and enter the cave. Don't worry about putting on your rebreather. As you enter this cave, the game will automatically equip your rebreather for you. Now you have to swim through this water for a little bit, and my only recommendation is to follow these bits of debris. If you follow those as you swim along, you shouldn't get too lost. And once you've made it to the other side, you will be cold and wet. So, just showing here, you can either warm yourself up by heating up your weapon, or you can build a fire. Again, the choice is yours. But I will repeat, while you're in a cave and swimming in water, you tend to get cold and wet. So. You need sticks and cloth to make uh, fire and warm yourself up. Now we skip along. There are still story items down here and more ropes to climb. Once you've come down that rope, you've then got to climb up this wall with your climbing axe.
Now, I did manage to light this cave up with flares. Uh, when you come in, it can be confusing. Keep that big bit to your left. And just run on through this water. Then you should be pretty good. You'll find an orange tent. It's the last orange tent that you can save the game at before going on to the end. So, once you've done that, if you wanted to, continue on up this hallway. And you'll find a pitcher on the on the ground and a doorway. And this is where you need the key card. Swipe that and you'll open the door. Walk along this red corridor, climb this rope, and you'll find yourself in a rooftop bit. Meds and bones up here. Continue along, you'll find this hole. Drop down the hole. Go through this door and to be careful of these oxygen tanks. They can explode. Anyway, come down this hole. You have to crouch to get through here. There's different passageways. But this is the one you come up this rope. And once you're at the top of this rope, you will find yourself inside the cafeteria. At the opposite end of the cafeteria, you'll find a broken piece of the ceiling. Walk up these pipes and continue on through the duct. Drop through this bit, and if you don't want to lose health, you may want to climb down that pipe there. Continue on through this child's area, and there's some mutant baby. You and armsies. And you know you're getting closer when you start finding more things that belong to Megan. Oh, Megan. Drop down this hole. Now you're into the last stretch. Make your way past the water cooler, through the labs. There are cannibals, and there are baby mutants down here. The cannibals won't be aggressive as long as you've got the red paint. But the babies will be. We move along and we enter the room that has the artifact. Once in this room, you just need to open the artifact. Get your son Timmy. Watch a few little cutscenes, which I'm not going to show you. Can't spoil everything for you. But once you're satisfied that he's hooked up to the machine, then uh, continue on. Now I recommend sleeping here, or you may not have to, but if you get killed during the boss fight, that's where you will come back to. You've entered a big room now. Um, it's kind of weird, but anyway, uh, there's a kid at the end. Sitting nice and quiet. And it's when you approach her, things begin to get interesting. Interesting, you see? Start to get a bit chaotic. This is the final bus. Uh, it has a lot of attacks, a lot of jumping, diving attacks, and swiping. It's hard to sort of uh, explain what different types of attacks there are. They're probably explained somewhere, but you can look them up if you want to. It is a, it is quick, and it does jump long distances, as you can see right here. Now you can use melee attacks against it, but you have to get up close. And here I'm using the flintlock pistol. I think it's pretty effective weapon as long as you can get your aim and you know learn how to dodge the attacks while you're doing it it is slow to reload but um, I don't know I think maybe the damage is worth it 
but another weapon that I really wanted to test was the new one, the crossbow. It's also slow to reload, and I think if you can master how, where to aim, it would be actually a very good weapon against the final boss because you can see the crossbow bolts stuck in the boss and you can get them back. My personal favourite is explosives. They do a fair amount of damage to the boss. And if you stick them to the ground and lead the boss into them, that's a nice little thing. If you can get a perfect throw like that one, sticky bombs will stick to this boss. Uh, be careful where you're throwing them, because a missed throw, a wasted explosive. That's why I like to stick them on the ground and lead the boss into them. Uh, I've got some footage here too of a turtle shell. I don't really know why I stuck this in, but just to prove it actually protects against the hits. Now, this is a normal game that I'm in here, and I'm not taking any damage. Except from that one. Oh, that's bullshit. Fucking bullshit. And again, these oxygen tanks. Nice little tip. They explode and do damage. Head bombs. I don't use them a lot. And again, if you miss through them, it's a wasted explosion. So I think. After all that, my final conclusion might be that the crossbow is actually a very effective weapon against the final boss. And once you've killed the final boss, you'll find this little girl. You pick her up, and you take her back to the lab with the artifact. And there's Timmy, and we place this little girl inside the artifact. I'll keep calling her little girl, but this is Megan Cross. Megan Cross. And she drops a key card. It is a gold key card. You pick it up and you use it on this door here. You will now continue on towards the very ending of the game. Uh, you will pass through some cave sections and some facility sections crawl through some walls like this one you'll also climb down some walls it's a pretty big one you can jump down but I don't recommend it you'll also have to swim for a little bit and again if you follow these debris or in this case it's a light you should be pretty good you come across another pedestal there again are rocks supplied. Place the rocks on the pedestal and the door will open. Continue on through. Don't go down there and it doesn't matter if you go left or right. My habit is to go left. You'll find your way through more facility area and climb yourself through some more cave area. Again until you find yourself at a red door which is actually an elevator and again you need the gold key card to activate this elevator okay um once that opens you come along through this corridor and you will find yourself in a room with a big blue machine on the roof. You run up to this panel and from here the choice is yours. There's two choices here to make. You can finish the game and open up creative and I'll try to put a link up for that. Or you can continue playing the game with an alternate ending and I'll put up another link to that if I can. Um, so hope this video helps you get to the ending to save your son and finish the game. Um, if it has, then give a thumbs up, subscribe, I might make some more videos like this. I hope you do find it helpful. Uh,
give a shout out to uh, one of my subscribers, Phase and Beast. I hope I'm getting that how you want to pronounce it. Uh, you asked for help getting to the end to save Timmy, so I put this one together for you. I hope you find it extremely helpful. Um, thanks for watching, everybody else, and uh, subscribe if you want to follow along with my antics. Uh, I do other series such as playing with the artifact, which I'm planning on doing now with a creative game. <coughs> and um, we do it with our multiplayer game where I do it with two mates. That's playing with the artifact. And I'm also doing a hard survival solo playthrough. So, you know, if you're interested in any of those series, if you're playing on the PlayStation and you want some tips, I did a series on the PlayStation as well, so you can check them out. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.